Hi, my name is Dr. Randy Papke, and I'm here to step you through how to use the microscope that came with your lab kit. Um, let's start out with learning the parts of the microscope. This part right here is called the eyepiece, also known as the ocular, and it has a magnification of 10x. You can see right here that it says on the side 10x, and that means that the microscope has a 10 times power of magnification compared to just your plain eye unaided. If you look in the eyepiece, you will see a pointer. And if you turn this eyepiece around, you'll see that the pointer rotates around the field of view inside the microscope eye. The next part of the microscope that we're going to learn is called the head. Um, most microscopes, we don't talk too much about the head, but on this one, it's really interesting because the head rotates 360 degrees all the way around so that you could, be sh you could have somebody that you want to show what you're looking at. You can just turn the eyepiece and show them, I'm sorry, the head and show them. But do be aware that when you're using the microscope, it's best to have it in line with uh, the rest of the body here. The next part of the microscope that we're going to learn is called the arm. And we learn the arm because this is what you hold your microscope with. I just picked it up with three fingers now, but it's really best to hold it very firmly with your hand and with your other hand under the base. So that's the arm. Next we have the diaphragm. And the diaphragm changes the amount of light that goes in and out of the microscope. I'll show you how to adjust that later, but for now, the, the diaphragm is called a disc diaphragm. And if you turn this disc, it's just below the stage. If you turn this disc, then uh, different numbers will show up and different amounts of light will come through. This is the stage. And the stage is where you put your, micro, your microscope slides. Next, we have the clips. And the clips are what you put your slides underneath to hold your, your slides steady and to make sure that they don't just slip off and fall down and break. Next, we have the rotating nose piece. On the rotating nose piece, there are three objective lenses. That's their name, is objective lens. And there are different magnifications. We have a 4x, a 10x, and a 40x lens. If you want to switch between those lenses, you just turn the rotating nose piece and click it into place. Listen, clicks right into place. You, if it doesn't click into place, you won't be able to see anything because light won't, won't shine through. Another thing about the rotating nose piece and the objective lenses is they have different color bands going around them. So this one has a red band, that's the low power, the, the 4X. This one has a yellow band, that's the medium power or 10X. And this one has a blue band and that's high power. So if you can't see the numbers when you're looking at a microscope, you will see, be able to see the colors. The next thing that we're gonna learn about is the light source, also known as the illuminator. You're going to turn that on by finding the switch on the back of the microscope and clicking it on. Don't play with the fuse. If the fuse comes loose, you can try and tighten that back up again, but generally we're not gonna to touch the fuse. Just the on-off switch right here, which turns on the light source. The last thing that we're gonna learn out about before we actually use the microscope is the focus knobs. And there are two focus knobs. One is called the fine focus and one is called the coarse focus. You might hear me call them the fine adjust and the coarse adjust because I am adjusting the focus, but they're focus knobs. You can find the fine focus on either side of the microscope as well as the coarse adjust. Let me show you that here, fine and coarse. If you turn them, you see that they both turn. So I'm turning the coarse focus knob right now, and both the fine and the coarse focus are turning. You might also see that the stage is moving when I turn the coarse focus up and down, back and forward. The stage moves up and down, and that's how we get the slider focus. Now that you're ready to use your microscope, you need to do a couple things. You need to make sure your microscope is in a secure and safe location away from direct light. It's gonna make it much easier to use. You want it to be on a solid table. 
not on books or anything underneath of it. It should be on the table. You shouldn't have any food or drink around this microscope because if you spill, it could damage the microscope. Um, so once it's in a safe place, you're going to start looking at your microscope and uh, you might start to see if you look at the lens, you might see some dust on that lens or um, some smudges like fingerprints on that lens. That's normal uh, after, after use, but we don't want to have that there. So you can clean that off with some of the lens paper that comes with your kit. Now you might have lens paper that looks rectangular like this or it might be in a box. Uh, it should say lens paper or Kim wipes on it. So you just take one of those out, and I like to fold it a little bit, and then rub the lens with it. No cleaning solution is necessary. It's just gonna be a very gentle clean here. At some point, you might need to do the same thing to your other lenses. That's up to you. Also, you might need to clean where the light source is, because dust does collect on that light source. Perfectly normal. Feel free to clean that if you want to, or if you feel like you need it. Sometimes dust particles, people think are cells, and um, so it's a good idea to, to just remove any of that if, as needed. So we are ready to use the microscope, and the best thing to do is to sit down while you're using the microscope. So I've got a chair here, and I am going to just sit down. The first thing that you're gonna want to do is, if you remember the disc diaphragm, you're gonna want to turn the disc diaphragm until you have the numbers two or three clicked on. And that will help um, have the light be shining at your eyes at, at the right level. The next thing that you're going to do is make sure that your stage is all the way down. Remember from before that turning the course focus will lower the stage or raise the stage. So here you see me lowering the stage. And we do that because as we put our slide on the stage, uh, it, it could bump up against the, the lenses, and we don't want that to happen. So stage all the way down. The next thing I always do when I'm putting a slide on the stage is I look at the slide. Uh, you can see how I'm looking at it. There's a bunch of words right here on the slide, and in the center is the object that we're going to look at. In this case, it's the letter E. So in order to do that, we turn these clips off to the side off to the side a little bit and then you put your slide I tend to like to use my left hand to do this but it doesn't really matter put your slide on, on, in the center so that the object that you want to see is coming straight up through the center of the stage where the light is shining on it brightly and then notice that it's not centered um, that's okay you just put those clips on and it holds it in place securely you can still move the slide around a little bit once they're under the clips, but it's a lot harder and it's a lot safer. So make sure you have those clips in place. The next thing that we're gonna do is learn how to focus on the object that you're looking at. And we're gonna use the coarse focus knobs to start that process. So um, I don't really need to look in the microscope right now, but I can. If I look in here, all I see is a bright light. So I'm looking in here, but now I'm gonna turn my coarse focus knob and you're going to do this until you see the object that you're looking for. If you do this a couple times like you saw me just do just now, and you're not seeing what, you're, what you need to see, it's probably because your object is not centered in the light. So all you have to do is move that around a little bit. And you can do that while you're looking. Move that around a little bit until it's dead center in the middle of the opening of that stage. It takes a little practice, so don't worry if, it does, if you don't get that right away. So right now, my letter E is centered in the middle of the field of view in my microscope. And it's not in focus though. So I'm just going to fiddle with the stage a little bit with the coarse focus until I get it in focus. Once you get it mostly in focus, you can now use the fine focus to get it really crisp. So sometimes using the fine focus is a little bit better at getting it in the final crisp, crisp stages um, compared to the coarse focus. It's up to you when you're on low power. When you move up to medium power, and we're gonna do that now, we're zooming into medium power. I'm turning that revolving nose piece until the medium power clicks into place. 
and um, I'm going to look in again. Now your microscope should be parfocal, and parfocal just means that um, when you switch between the lenses, it should still be mostly in focus. And this is, but I could, I could do a little bit better, so I'm just slightly turning my fine focus to get that better in focus for me. Also when I look in, I'm seeing that the letter E is a little bit too high up. I'm also seeing that my letter E is upside down. So what that means is if I'm seeing it too high up in my field of view and the letter E is upside down, that means I actually need to push the letter E farther away from me on the stage because everything is switched around in a microscope. So up is down and down is up and left is right and so forth. So I'm going to move this down in my field of view, but I noticed that I pushed it away from my body. You need to do that because when we go up to high power, if what you're looking at isn't right in the center, then you'll actually lose track of it. Let's go ahead and look at high power. So again, we're going to turn our revolving nose piece until it clicks into place. And then we're looking in, again, it's parfocal. So I'm seeing things, but I wanna get it just a little bit crisper. I barely had to touch that fine focus. It's good. Some students worry that when they go on to high power that it will um, scrape up against the slide and this um, shouldn't happen on this microscope. It should be okay. If you're experiencing any difficulty with that, get in touch with your instructor and, uh, and they'll see what they can do with you. Maybe have a conference call or a video call with you about how to use that. Now that you're on higher power, it's often a good idea to decrease the light a little bit. So we're going to take our, um, our diaphragm and we're going to flip it around until the light gets just a little bit dimmer. Or maybe you need it to be brighter. That's okay. It's, it's up to you. You can play with that to make it look good to your own eye. But you are allowed to play with this. It's very helpful. Again, you can, you can use the um, fine focus on high power. I wouldn't use the coarse focus on high power though, just the fine focus. The next thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna take the slide off. And you might think that would be straightforward, but there's a couple of little things that you need to do before you take the slide off, including you need to be on low power. So let's keep going around with that nose piece until you're on low power. And then once you're on low power, you're okay. You can just remove those clips and take the slide off. Tuck those clips back in there just for safety's sake so you don't break it. I noticed that when I was using my microscope and I was looking at the slide, I did see some fingerprints on the slide. And you can use the same Kim wipe that you used earlier, the same lens paper that you used earlier, to clean that uh, slide as well as clean the microscope. It works equally both ways. Now we're ready to put the microscope back in the packaging. And the first thing you should do is turn that light off with the switch, again, on the back of the microscope. Now we're ready to put the microscope away. And you need to put it back in the packaging that it came with. Um, if you took a picture, great, pull out that picture of how it needs to go back in, it is a little tricky. But this is a, a safety concern. So um, here's the, the styrofoam that I had earlier, both halves, the, the top and the bottom half. And if you'll remember, I put all of the supplies in the top half. We need to put the microscope in the bottom half. Before you put the microscope in, it, you do need to have the stage all the way up or it won't fit in the styrofoam packaging. Make sure you hold your microscope with both hands and then you're going to turn it on its side and place it into the styrofoam. Again, it's a little tricky. It's okay to play with it a little bit till you get it in place. Notice that I did not put the plastic wrap back on. That's okay. But you do need to include the dust cloth and the instructions when you put this away. And I'm going to just tuck that right here. The last thing that needs to go in is the charger and the charger gets put on the side of the microscope, like so. And if you've done this very well, and nothing's hanging over the edges, which is a little bit of a trick, uh, you should be able to put the lid 
of the styrofoam pack on and it should be able to fit really nicely. Thank you for listening. Uh, I hope you have fun learning how to use your microscope.